What's up guys, Subzeric here, and it's finally time. These are the closed qualifiers for the Esports World Cup, which is a huge tournament that's happening next set. $550,000 prize pool. It's gonna be a ton of really, really notable names from across the entire world playing in that tournament. And to get into that tournament, there are games going on right now in all of the regions. This is from some games that happened this morning, the SEA qualifiers. And you can see this is a really, really stacked lobby. I want to watch this because it's YBY1's team versus the team of Jose Paulo, who's a fantastic Oceania player. We are watching Chaos's POV, who's another fantastic player. Uh, Donny G, I don't know a ton about, but I've, I've definitely heard the name. And, you know, the, the YBY1 team is also really, really strong. Piva is a, a player that I've heard a lot of. I think that's how you pronounce their name. Oh, and Esha, of course, is on team OCE as well, which is really, really cool. But yeah, this uh, we are going to be watching it through Chaos's POV this game. But as I've talked about before, this is a 4v4 tournament you can see a lot of people have their sort of like tags, their their names over there. So you can use that to kind of track who's on whose team and, you know, see who does the best here in this uh, in this kind of wild format. Just to look at Chaos's spot here, by the way, we have a, a really, really solid opener for Duelist. We have a, a Titan's Resolve that's slammable here. We really would love to play Duelist from this spot. So we'd love an augment that angles us towards Duelist. I love a sleight of hand in Duelist. You can just throw this onto to anyone, really, like a, a random Bully Bear or even like random Kiana. Too healthy is a fantastic augment, but you really want to play Kaisa or Zyra from it. I don't really see either of those angles being played here. Uh, and Portable Forge, I just do not like this augment. Uh, it's fun, but in, especially in a tournament where your life is on the line, I would not look at taking that. I would, though, look at taking this Lucky Paws. We take Lucky Paws here. We already have one Kobuko here. And ooh, we do accidentally put the make the one-star Kobuko our guy are uh are one that actually gets like the hero augment but that's okay the big thing is cracking open this item here and praying for something good on cool go sadly we don't really get anything i guess ah uh, yeah your options are pretty terrible here maybe you take static shiv this is this is pretty awful um i i don't think you can it looks like it looks like Chaos here is just going to go for the Vow onto Kobuko. He wants to play for tempo. He, he doesn't want to greed his items forever, which is a very fair play. It just certainly feels a little bit bad here. Um, and I guess we'll we'll look for a sec and see if uh, if that is actually occurring. Maybe he's just holding onto the Vow. He's going to put that onto another frontliner. But yeah, no, you, you got to put it onto the Kobuko. Um, and yeah, it's just Vow Kobuko. I mean, at the end of the day, it is an item on Kobuko. And so that's nice. I do, I'm a little scared of where this is gonna take us late game when we have a Val Kobuko, cause that's not amazing. But hey, it, it is tempo as well. And Kobuko getting kills means that we're gonna farm gold, which would be really, really nice if we could actually start getting some kills. So yeah, a little bit rough first couple of fights. We have tier, chain, and a bow open in this situation, which pretty reasonable items. The only downside is we do not have half of a cloak for a D-Flaw. And I feel like D-Flaw is one of the best items you can build in this setup here, but we do have potentially half of like a redemption. The chain vest could be like maybe a, a bramble vest, though with this protector's vow, we already have some extra armor just from building the vow. So it's it's a little scary. I mean, hey, vow is probably not horrible on Kobuko. The stats are pretty good. The mana is pretty good. Also, we opted to sell an Aatrox here in order to make 20 gold, which I think makes perfect sense. This is stacking up our Kobuko, which is really important. So yeah, I feel like you have to. Also, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Let's look, let's look back at the scouting real quick. Team uh, team YBY1 is absolutely going all out here. YBY1 is holding two Kobukos, and then I think he scouted someone else. Uh, no, this is Cast's own board. He scouted, yeah, NCC1 is also holding a Kobuko. That's so, so sick, man. YBY1's, because, and this is one of the things about 4v4 that's, that's so wild. Also, you could take Redemption here. I, I assume that's your pick. That's the thing about 4v4 is so wild, is when you play in a normal game, you play Kobuko reroll, and like maybe one person like holds a Kobuko or two to grief you. But in this format, the people on YBY's team, it's so, so valuable for them to hold Kobukos. So every one of them, they're just going to say, put Kobuko into your team builder, hold every Kobuko you can. So I, I love this kind of stuff in 4v4 formats like this, where it's it's completely optimal. Like someone else was playing Fortune. I don't know if that was someone on Chaos's team or if it was someone on YBY1's team, but it would have been hilarious if that's someone on YBY's team who says, okay, you know what? I'll even play Fortune so I get to hold some Kobukos. But yeah, I mean, that's already scattered around three extra Kobukos being held. And look, it's so, so difficult to hit Kobukos through this. Uh, ooh, this is also really bad for us. Uh, yeah, I I mean, this is a rough spot to be in. We're, we're looking and like 
you know, you can pick two costs, I guess. Yeah, that's that's probably going to be the most influential for now. But when you're playing around a, a three star one cost, the fact that he's guaranteed not getting buffed up here is really, really rough. Also, I will say we're watching from Chaos's team's perspective, but I am a little bit rooting for Team YBY just because uh, YBY1 is such a beast and I would love to see him play in this tournament. Uh, so, yeah, it's kind of funny that we're watching the POV of someone that we're not even really rooting for that much. I mean, I, I uh, Jose is a, is a fantastic player. I've, I've watched his stream a lot and learned from him. I've only heard good things about Esha uh, and, and Chaos and everyone. So not to say that I'm like rooting against them or anything like that but yby is is just one of the one of the gods of tft in any case here you can see we still haven't found another kobuko we pick up chain vest here which could be steadfast heart but i feel like those items are gonna suck so so much but you might have to deal with it okay a tg seems pretty reasonable and then you hold the chain for something potentially better here and then a rod as well oof i am not too pleased with the items that we have been dropped so far we have to roll it down Try to pick up some Kobokos here. Looks like we're going to stay at 50 gold here to try to continue to stack up our Koboko because we're we're not very close to Koboko 3. So we're just going to we're going to continue to stack here and uh, and wait a, a few rounds. So we do have the TG as a, an optional slam. You could I mean, our, our slams could be TG Gwinsu and then hold this chain for a Koboko item, which sounds kind of horrible. But uh, hey, may, maybe it'll all work out. Uh, this is Lechui, and yeah, is holding that Kobuko as well, and playing one on board for Fortune. So that's another two out. It's just so hard. This this really changes the way that TFT is played because reroll is so much more difficult when you you do something like this. Can we just forage quite a good augment? Sadly, we don't really have anyone crazy to put it on right now. I guess you could put it on to someone like a Riven. Uh, I feel like she would hold it pretty decently, though you'd really like to find a Riven too, ideally. But hey, we're playing the Four Bruiser. Eventually, we'll be playing Four Spellweaver. We check the items here, and yeah, then just throw it onto Riven. I feel like she uses so many items so, so well. She uses the tank items pretty well. She uses the AD items well. I, I feel like it's got to be onto Riven, so I believe it. And hey, we did pick up another Kobuko on the rolldown. We are seven Kobukos at this point. You would really like to be hitting sooner rather than later, but hey, not terrible. Also, if we do end up making the TG, maybe we could get like a Lucky Loves last augment would be pretty cool. I'm a little bit surprised Cast doesn't opt to even uh, slam Lucky Loves here just onto someone like the Sivir or just like a frontliner like Aatrox. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised by that. But yeah, we will roll down here, roll once more. If we find a Kobuko here, surely we'll send it down to like 40, maybe even 30 gold to try to find Kobuko 3. But yeah, I mean, this is this is going to be our board for now. And once we find Kobuko, we'll start pushing levels. He is going to check the TG and now he's going to throw it onto TK. So I'm not really sure why we waited so long on this TG. I think he was just kind of worried about his situation, which is fair. Also, this is really kind of awkward with Kobuko here, where the Vow plus the Redemption make him instacast at start of combat. So he does his little dance and he actually like wastes time where the rest of the board is walking up. And so he actually can't Redemption them, which is... Kind of hilarious in a very not ideal way, but I mean, it's it's not the end of the world, but it, it's certainly a little bit annoying here. Animals here, I'm really curious to see what the take is. It could just be, I, I could certainly see this just be Cloak, and then, the, I mean, Cloak is great, but then the secondary question is, are you greeting Declaw in this spot? There's a lot of AP in this lobby. If you make something like a Gargoyle, you might be just afraid that you, you can't actually get to enough uh, MR. So I, I could certainly see this being greeting for Declaw here. We're going to roll down, even like I said, to 30, I think is quite reasonable. The question is, would you roll down to 20 if you miss Kobuko here? Okay, we don't have to answer that question. Luckily, we do end up hitting here. We also pick up six Zyras on the way, which is really, really nice. And yeah, he is going to full greed this Declaw. You've seen this so, so much with Story Champion, with Lucky Paws. People do not want to make, they they really want to make, I guess is the other way to say it, a Declaw in, in TFT. Declaw is so good on these carries that have a ton of HP. It's just so much healing, so much MR against all these type of magic damage threats. So I think this makes perfect sense. We greed the Declaw here. I don't think you're looking for Aatrox 3 in this position, so you probably sell that by the Rek'Sai here and just make 40 gold. And hey, our Econ's not even bad. This might even be like a, a top four, even though there's so many Kobukos being held. But you could really see the power of this team format where so many people were trying to deny the Kobukos that it made it really, really hard to actually hit. Like this is uh, this is some some nice team coordination out of YBY1's team. And hey, it's it's a small thing. It's it's pretty obvious to deny the reroll for people playing it. But, you know, I'm sure there'll be some teams that are not very coordinated and are going to miss out on things like this just because they're like too lost in their own game plans. I'd love to hear some of the, the player comps, by the way. I don't know. I have Jose muted, of course, here, but I don't know if um, maybe for some of the America streams that are going to be later today, if people are going to have comms on because like they could certainly leak things. So I, I imagine they'll have comms off, but 
Uh, I mean, it would be really, really cool if they did. All right, we do finally pick up the D-Claw here, and then the rest of our slams, kind of interesting, actually. We can we can go back and look at this for a sec, because there was the opportunity to make, like, a Morello here. Uh, we do have Zyra as our, our guy, and, and Zyra does have some amount of heal cut on her ability, so I think that's the idea from Chaos here, is that he doesn't really need to care that much about building a Morello here, and also Nash's JG, two really, really fantastic items onto the Zyra. So we get to do this, we get the Sivir in, pretty sure it's always, I guess... It's probably often Talisman of uh, the, the AP one, though I do think... I, I feel like I remember looking at the stats in the Garen comp, and the um, the Shred one was quite good. I wouldn't be surprised if the Shred one is quite good in this comp as well, because you're always just going to be Kale level 3. Guaranteeing that Shred for, for Zyra is really, really nice. I, I could certainly see it. And the Koboko damage is magic damage, if I recall right. It's not... It's not a uh, true damage, I think. We'll look at the damage chart uh, again after this. I mean, I don't, I certainly don't think it can be Baboom, and I certainly don't think it can be Blinding Speed. So you default stationary support and you see what you get here. I mean, it just has to be stationary, right? There's so many that could be good. Wow, this one's fantastic. A Locket and a Gargoyle or a, a Randuins for your, your Koboko. This Koboko is going to be the most tanky guy of all time. Yeah, this is fantastic for this team here. Uh, and just scouting around looking to see what's going on with his teammates. I mean, if we just want to 4-2, do a little check at where the teams are. YBY1's team is looking a little scary. Lechuyan at 16. I'm sure that was the Fortune player. NCC in 7th and YBY down in 6th. Piva in 5th. Wait, this could be? The 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 top 4 is all the OCE team and the bot 4 is all YBY's team. Okay, but Jose takes a loss here, so it's not the case. But that was really, really close to this game looking really lopsided, which is quite scary uh, for, for the team of YBY. Like, we, we got to be... A little careful here but yeah i mean in the spot of chaos here we're just looking to push levels we're looking to get six bruiser in and make our board really strong with six bruiser didn't get a chance to see what that call to chaos was but maybe we'll we'll get a chance later we'd love to find something like a ribbon three and i'm i'm kind of interested in the fact that chaos has held on to these atroxes so long just to keep the the dream of atrox three alive just because he is going to have so much hp with bruiser but a little scary that we're losing a lot of these fights lechuyan also lost a fight. Man, if this was, uh, you know, whoever POV, I, I wish we could pivot over and look at Lechuyan here. We have Chain open in this position. I, because you have to make kind of like a random item here. We're looking at maybe just the Sunfire here and you just throw that onto like an Aatrox. Or maybe we're just going to take the belt and live with it. I, I don't hate a Sunfire in this comp just because I, I don't think Zyra's heal cut is that sort of uh, reliable, I guess is what I'm thinking of. Also, the roll at level 7 is pretty interesting here. Looking for everything 3-starred. Wow, this is wild. I mean, I, I think his idea is that if I don't play for Zyra 3 and everything 3 this game, then my game's just going to be a loss here. I could certainly see it. I think a lot of people would look at just pushing levels, trying to get like a 6 bruiser in here, trying to find that Galio, which we still don't have Galio, right? Or do we have... We still don't have Galio and we still don't have Silas, right? Um, but yeah, just looking for those guys on 8. But no, we're, we're looking for everything 3-star on this board, which, I mean... I think it makes a lot of sense. Ooh, this one. I mean, we're just, I mean, honestly, like you might have to take this. Like you're really just looking for acceptable Zyra item. And then like the, the problem is TG is kind of awkward, but like, I, I think I would just take this. He's going to roll it. Okay. I mean, this option is probably worse, but once again, you might have to take this, this option. Okay. You, you have to, you have to take this, right? There's no way we're gonna roll one more time. Oh my God. And he actually got a pretty decent outcome at the end of the day. The GS Warmogs BT. Wow. The, the cojones on this guy on Chaos here to actually continue to roll there. That was really scary. There's so many potential bad things that you can hit. And I mean, honestly, this is one of the better options. They, I'm, I, I'm blown away by the continuing rolling there that was that was horrifying i was so scared that we were going to roll to something terrible but i think his idea is that his spot does not look that good if if he has to take a mediocre item it might just be a bot for anyway so we so we might as well play for good items though in this format every placement matters a ton right that could be the difference because it's binary result here it's either your team wins or your team loses and you have to care about what the rest of your team is doing. I guess that's another thing is that like if your team's doing really well, then you can try to sort of like play for more placements. And if your team's doing poorly, you kind of all have to hail Mary it and go for a win out. Because, you know, if if one of you just does OK, it doesn't really do anything for you if the other ones did poorly. We're going to get the way in here. Look to duplicate something. Pick up the Aatrox 3 on the roll down. 
just looking for an item for a backliner here, which yeah, is going to have to be Gunblade, I guess. Not ideal. Would have preferred a Shoujin for sure onto the Soraka, but this... I mean, this is decent enough, and can this board get through everything? No. I'm going to lose to Lechuyan, who, by the way, let's go back and look, because this was Fortune cash out Lechuyan. He is, his, he's level 8-0 here. He's got a Kaisa 2, he's got Zaya paired. He doesn't even have Galio 2, but the big upside, I guess, for a spot where all of his power came from is the number of items. He got a support item, he's got 3 items Zaya, 3 item on the Kaisa, 3 item Galio, Morello onto Teemo. He's got so many items to work with. That's where all the power came from, from his fortune cash out, which is really not a bad thing. It's just, he would really prefer to have a two-star front line because look how scary this fight was. We could have easily lost this fight if if Chaos had Zyra 3 here. Isuo won, but we tabbed out of it, so I didn't quite see what it was. Oh, is this the, the guys in the back row get more stuff? And yeah, he's just going to take the free HP there. Fair enough. I mean, we don't really care that much about positioning. We also... We still have this duplicator, but I think the idea is that, you know, every other round play is going to be paint a unit. That's really, really nice. We could either just duplicate this this Zyra here, or we could look at, I mean, okay, maybe I'm too greedy, but lowest of keys, I might just duplicate the, the Riven here and then try to roll next round and try to find everything using the duplicator. Because at that point, you need to just find, like, you, you could find kind of one or the other. But if we du duplicate the Zyra, I mean, we're, we're certainly kind of like, Oh my god, and there's the Zyra and the Ribbon Chop, so now we just need one. I think we're going to wait here. It looks like we're going to wait. We're going to wait two, and hopefully we can live two rounds. It's really, really scary to try to wait here, but you do get the opportunity to level up and then play six Bruiser. So we're going to go for it. We're going to risk it for the Biscuit. This fight looks really, really scary, though. Also, Lechuyum did go eighth. Jose went seventh here, so about even so far for the two teams. This fight looks really, really rough for us. Oh, I think we might be dead here. Yeah, I think Chaos is dead here, but I will still endeavor to watch the rest of the game. I, I really hope that Chaos watches the rest of the game. Yeah, he's going to be looking around the rest of the lobby because the game does not end when our hero, Chaos, here dies. We have to look around the rest of the lobby. Jose, seventh. Chaos, sixth. Looks pretty bad, especially if Donnie G and Esha also can't pull together something really well. This almost could be a YBY team sweep. Look at this. YBY in first, NCC in second, Kiva in third. Look at their board strength as well. The seven faded board for YBY. Esha had a decent trick shot board. And Donnie G did have a, a set two on the board. So there's a there's a lot of stuff going on there. We're, we're going to look at Esha here versus Donnie G. The team fight. This is so, so scary. I mean, I, I think Donnie G wins this, right? And th that's kind of good for the team. Unless the Silas manages to do something crazy. Okay, Chaos, we're, we're doing a little bit too much. Let's, let's stay on, uh, on task here. Oh my god, wait. I mean, uh, talking about that Silas, is it impossible for us to kill it? I mean, our, our set died. Okay, we just barely got through. That's probably the best case for this team. So those guys can both play for placements here. Because Dani G can actually play for like a top three potentially with the strength of his board. But I don't know. Piva's board looked really, really good. We're going to be still focusing on the OCE boys' uh, their their boards, I'm sure. Just because we're we're on the POV of it being our OTM. NCC, YBY fighting. Oh, st stop jumping around. I want to see. Okay, this is YBY fighting Esha here with that Cinder board that I was talking about. Really, really strong. Seven faded here. Cinder does get sniped. Just barely. Oh my god, that fight is so close. Esha just barely. Oh my god. Losing. Esha losing. It is the queen sweep here for YBY's team. One, two, three, eight is a pretty funny score line here, but that, that certainly means that YBY's team wins this game. We can watch a couple of extra fights here just for flavor. I'll skip through Dragon just because we, we just want to see the last couple of fights and see which which board ends up reigning supreme here. We got... Dude, uh, can we just chill out and, and look at one board for a second? We do have... Okay, so NCC is losing really hard. YBY is streaking really hard with that faded board. I think... YBY, I, in my head, he's the team captain because he's the guy who I've reviewed so much. He's the guy I know. Hey, no, no. Oh, he's pivoting to Jazz Latte POV just to check him out. But okay, we're, we're back in the game. But yeah, YBY, in my head, he's the team captain because I, I just think he's a beast. And maybe he's leading his team to a win with uh, himself going first. I guess we'll see. NCC. Okay, honestly, I'm going to skip ahead of it in this VOD and just get down to the final two because like it looks like this game is going to go on another like almost entire stage here. We're looking at the score sheet. Can we look back at the game for, for us? Okay. Piva ended up actually winning a bunch of these fights here. Can we get back? Look right at the end. Yeah, it looks like, hey, I was talking about YBY, but 
He's got six Dryad on his board, but Kiva's board here, let's check it out. It's a pretty standard Lilia Morgana board with so many upgrades. He's got the Rakan 2, he's got the Wukong 2. Yeah, he's just got everything two, two starred on this board. Also, we're looking at Jazz Latte's POV. I think that was the end of the game, though, with Kiva winning. I mean, this is the problem when you're looking at, uh, I mean, do we have the end of the game there, at least? I don't think so. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to assume people won there with that really, really stacked board. I, I can't give you guys the final fight. I'm sorry, but that's all right. Uh, I will be co-streaming this event, or it's not really an official co-stream, but I am going to be watching the NA teams play on my Twitch around when this VOD goes live, because as long as people are as long as people are streaming, if, if nobody streams, then I guess I'll just be sad. But go check that out on my Twitch. Um, one more shout out, something that I, I just want to shout out is my Metafy class. The link's in the description. It's going to be about the playing for strongest board in TFT. So if you want to learn how to do that, go join the class down below. You have one, two, you got about two weeks left to sign up and I'm going on vacation next week. So like that week's going to fly by for you guys because you'll have none of my content or I guess it'll be painful, but okay. I'll see you guys later. Bye.